Jeff, we thought it would be good today to end with the contemporary trend both in the charismatic movement and in the evangelical movement about the deconstruction of scriptures and the reconstruction of scriptures. And so within the uh, New Apostolic Reformation, this deconstructing of the Bible is often known as new life. And um, kind of terminology that surrounds it is uh, a government is being put into place that has a superior understanding through modern day apostles and prophets of what the scriptures are really saying. Mm -hmm. So now we have men that call themselves apostles who, who claim uh, that kind of authority of new light and old interpretation of scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you, you may think this is uh, being critical uh, that people actually say this, but isn't it interesting that inside of the new apostolic reformation uh, and this contemporary move of saying that the Bible is not yet completed. We have a man who is a self-declared apostle uh, that is in a real strong relationship with Bethel Church and Bill Johnson. In fact, Bill Johnson promotes this man. His, he goes by the name of Apostle Brian Simmons. And he has had a personal experience where he said he was uh, you know, with Jesus uh, in a vision experience and Jesus breathed upon him to give him the ability to bring a new translation of the Bible called the Passion Translation. And so now the New Apostolic Reformation, with its apostles of greater illumination, have this uh, person who is now bringing out dominion theology and kingdom now beliefs and theology into a Passion Translation uh, for the New Apostolic Reformation. What do you know about this, Jeff? Well, just a, a little bit. I, I looked through 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians uh, of the Passion Translation, and it's, it's not a translation. It is a paraphrase. It is almost a, uh, a translating of certain words with commentary added. So to call it a translation is, is not true at all. But there's changes of words like instead of kingdom, it becomes kingdom realm. Uh, little things like that that feed into the dominionistic concept of the presence of God. And uh, like I said, it was only those two chapters I went through. But shouldn't all of our ears perk up and shouldn't we have that bell go off again in our head when anyone talks about a new translation being needed? Um, and the breath coming from, I don't know if it was a vision or if he said Jesus actually appeared to him or whatever, but the breath and a special commission to bring forth a new translation of the Bible. That, that should be a, a real warning sign to somebody. Now we, had, we had touched on earlier about cult think. Right. And isn't it interesting in um, the criticism of the New Apostolic Reformation, adding to scriptures, bringing in additional uh, information and applying meanings and interpretation that the scriptures never have intended. And, uh, you know... Church history for you know fifteen hundred years, uh, debating doctrines. So the pretty much the canon of scripture is is completely settled. We've right. debated these doctrines. So suddenly at the end of the age here, you know modern day apostles suddenly have this esoteric knowledge. This is something that's really interesting. Kind of that that prophetic thing again of dangling a carrot that says I see something. And know something that has been hidden in a mystery to the rest of the church for such a long time. This hidden mystery now has been given to me. And if you will listen to what I'm saying about these hidden mysteries, you'll have special knowledge that will make you elite from all the rest. Well, that, the scary part of this whole uh, Brian Simmons issue is the concept of having a special commission to bring new light to establish verities or truths. But when he talks about the Lord told him about another chapter in the book of John, John chapter 22, that Brian Simmons says one day he's going to publish or bring out. Uh, what do you think about that uh, statement? So instead of the, the canon of Scripture being finalized and that everything that the Lord said in the infallible Word of God, that all Scripture is God-breathed, and is infallible and is completed, suddenly the New Apostolic Reformation is uh, promoting 
uh, the fact that it's not, that uh, there's a hidden mystery to uh, apostles have, who have privy with God, with Jesus, in heaven, and Jesus will breathe upon them, and now these uh, secret es esoteric truths that have been hidden from the rest of the church yeah. suddenly will now be made available to these special apostles. So now there's, a uh, uh, instead of 21 chapters of John and a completed canon, we have this mystery of another portion yet to be revealed for the end times in an end time conquering church, uh, a church that is so glorious that there will be nothing to compare to it. Well, it's interesting. It goes along with the comments out of uh, certain books written by Bill Johnson, uh, books written by Johnny Enlow that talks about the end time generation that is going to move in power, signs and wonders going beyond even the apostles and the disciples. So we can tell the spirit behind this stuff uh, travels, you know, in the prophetic, in the pastoral, in the apostolic, and the newly commissioned to rewrite the Bible. So. And so, you know, we have uh, deadly warnings in Scripture about, um, you know, the Apostle Paul saying, Hey, I'm so surprised that you're departing from the gospel so quickly, um, you know, that they had been seduced, bewitched. Uh, by teachers in his day, and he was shocked and surprised, and then he went on to say, well, listen, this is such a, a bad issue, such a problem of deception. Here's the way it is. Though we, the apostles of the Lord, himself, Paul, or an angel from heaven, were to come to you and preach another gospel than the one that has already been a preached, let that man be accursed. And so how deadly are we now looking at a situation where uh, modern day New Apostolic Reformation apostles and prophets are saying, I have new light and old application, and I also have esoteric understanding of hidden mysteries of God that nobody else has. And if you will follow my ministry, if you will see the secrets that I alone possess, yeah. that I alone can give you because Jesus appeared to me, and he anointed me, and I know now this secret hidden uh, chapter that has never been revealed, mm -hmm. and things of this nature, that is a very, very, very dangerous territory. And Paul did a devil emphasis. He said, once again, I'm going to say, let that person be accursed. Yeah. This, is, this is very, very difficult. There, there are so many things in the charismatic movement that should be... Uh, so eye-opening to us and one of the things is this concept of secret knowledge I, I see certain websites and ministries that always have learn the secrets to this or learn the mysteries of this and they go on and on and what that does is it puts a hook in people's flesh and it draws them because don't we want to know secret mysteries and we want to be in on the know we want to be on the inside that's not the way it works the great lie is this it's hard, the Christian life. The cross, denying yourself. The whole concept of the true biblical Christianity is not a fantasy uh, pursuit of esoteric knowledge and understanding of mysteries hidden and secrets. That's all a cult. That's all Elizabeth Clare Prophet, Ramtha, and all the different things in the past. That shows you the level of the New Age, the level of the occult mindset and the occult spirit that has come in and, and puts hooks in people because this isn't enough. We don't even understand the mysteries that Paul revealed in this book yet. The one new man or the mystery that not all of us will sleep. Do you see what I'm saying? We always got to have something new. The, the kingdom now, the dominionists, the NAR, they're always going to put something out there in front of you to keep you chasing after it. And what a better thing to chase after than a new chapter of the Bible. So shouldn't we ask ourselves, um, uh, those of us that are exposed to the prophetic movement and dominion theology and the new apostolic reformation, shouldn't we ask ourselves some real simple questions? Why does the new apostolic reformation need its own translation? I mean, that's just a basic question we should ask. What is so different from the translations from people that are far more educated and groups of people that banded together to do those translations. And uh, once again, uh, you know, through the hundreds and hundreds of years of testing, 
why now is something so different in communication of scriptures about the New Apostolic Reformation that they need their own translation? Do we understand and see how much that is a cult think yeah. mentality? That we got a man who uh, Angel of Light appeared to, Joseph Smith, who was told that the scriptures of, of uh, historic Christianity are false, and that he alone would be given the esoteric understandings of the mysteries of God. And so now we have the Book of Mormon. Yeah, he, he actually weren't told they were false. He was told that he was getting, getting a greater and fuller revelation. So they accept the Bible, but he received a fuller and greater revelation. That's what the occult, that's what the esoteric, that's what that carrot is. And that's what John chapter 22 is, coming from Brian Simmons. It's that greater and fuller revelation that he can add to the Bible one day, when, I don't know, when certain terms are, are, are met or whatever the guidelines are, but that's where I see that. And so, wouldn't this be alarming that the only Christian-like uh, uh, situations where men uh, saw additional revelation and wrote, in addition to the Bible, are all cults? And they all come from angels of lights, mm -hmm. appearances of visions and angels' communication and supposedly heavenly encounters that generated additional scriptures that invalidated the sola scripture of the Reformation. That it's in the scripture alone, it's completed. God completed his, his canon, it's canonized. And the doctrines of Christ are already established. So now we have the new apostolic Reformation being like a cult think that no, it's not complete. And that there are men that are more enlightened with this uh, anointing this heavenly encounter that will give us this esoteric hidden understanding uh, that is yet to be revealed. So we have Joseph Smith and then we have uh, Jehovah's Witness and Charles Taz Wet Russell and uh, you know these men that had to establish their own scriptures, their own writing, the New World Translation for the Watchtower. And this is incredibly, incredibly interesting that this is even happening and so such a challenge is being put forth against this passion translation that instead of using the word like kingdom, he says kingdom realm. Jeff, why would he say kingdom realm instead of kingdom? Because kingdom refers to a future event, the return of Jesus Christ and his rule and reign from the throne of David in Jerusalem. Kingdom realm is a terminology that is used in the heaven to earth movement. And so it's a manipulation, it's an addition to the regular translation of how a word should be translated. That's why I say it's a paraphrase, it's actually an attempt to translate with his commentary added into scripture, which to me actually borders on a level of uh, uh, elitism and pride that is extremely disturbing to me. So, so now we have Brian Simmons, Parrotine, uh Bill Johnson, whose theology is kingdom now, that the kingdom of heaven yeah. is brought to earth by the church, and that the church will um, sanctify the seven pillars of culture and transform culture, thereby Christianizing the nations of the earth. We have that being put as a philosophy into a translation, which does not exist. There is no translation of kingdom now or dominion theology for the Bible. That is false doctrine and twisting of scriptures, and it's heretical. What, what level have we injected man into the supernatural? When we, when we inject into the thing that we have physically, and we can read, and we can hold, and we can check, and we can weigh, and then we inject man and his philosophies, and actually print it into this, what level have we gone to? I mean, it just blows my mind when I think about it. So one final thought, you know, this validation of a supernatural encounter. Simple question again. First one was, why does the New Apostolic Reformation need its own translation Bible? The second is this, would Jesus Christ ever appear to a man, either in vision form or through a visitation, breathe upon them and say, I want you to do a translation based upon the heresy of dominion theology and kingdom now. Would that ever happen? So, 
What was that experience that so many people are saying that they're having heavenly experiences where Jesus appears, and this is in quotation marks, and they're commissioned into an experience that they absolutely believe it's the authentic Jesus, but it validates the authority of Scripture, what is already written. Right. This is a common day occurrence, and it's getting more prolific. And we really need to test the spirits and bring above table these sorts of things that are going on in contemporary charismatic movement, signs and wonders, prophetic movement. We have to ask for accountability. And I think it's good that we're highly questioning Brian Simmons, an apostle that Bill Johnson is endorsing, and their need for their own Bible. And I want to end with the scripture here that we began with when we started doing these videos. But, you know, when we come to the point where subjectivity of man, man's visions, man's experiences, suddenly begin to form doctrine and, and change the Word of God, it, we're at a level that I don't think we realized we were at. I mean, this is scary when you really analyze it. So I want to read out of Second uh, Timothy real quick. Uh, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to this, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. So is the Passion translation bordering on another gospel and people turning their ears away? from the confrontation of dominion theology as a false doctrine and heresy and embracing a whole new gospel that has another Jesus that has a different spirit by it. And I would say, test the spirits and see if these things aren't true. And we just thank you, Jeff, for taking this time and bringing out these, uh, you know, uh, dialogue above the table. I hope this really creates a lot of dialogue out there where people begin to talk in, in a spirit of the Lord, mm -hmm. love the truth, and, uh, you know, really contend for the faith. So, Lord, we just thank you for these videos. We pray that they would be effective yes. in creating opportunity for people to see the deception that's going on in our days and turn back to Jesus. We just pray. Amen.